I have 265 on the bar. I'm gonna do five sets of 10 reps at 265. One set every three minutes. I'm sure a lot of us are aware, Memorial Day in America, it's coming up. And a common tradition within Memorial Day CrossFit functional fitness tradition is to do Murph, the workout Murph on Memorial Day as a representation of specifically Michael Murphy, but in general, the fallen soldiers, people who have fallen defending the freedom of every American citizen. And it's not uncommon for gyms to start doing something called like Murph prep, where as they're getting closer, you're starting to see a little bit more air squats, pull-ups, push-ups, running, etc. And my gym, CrossFit Darkside, is no exception. So last Saturday, we kind of had our Murph prep workout, where it was a partner workout that had a variety of movements and different patterns, but essentially, you ended up doing half Murph. And I coached it, so I didn't do it. But then I went home and I thought, okay, you know it would be a great way to do this on my own without necessarily needing a partner or anything like that is to do Cindy. Now Cindy is 20 minutes, five pull-ups, 10 push-ups, 15 air squats, as many as you can get. I've done Cindy before many times, kind of as mur Murph prep, because it's a perfect workout to do to get used to those movements. And in the past, I have done it with a weight vest and have pretty much emommed it fine, right? So every minute on the minute, I'm making sure I'm doing five pull-ups, 10 push-ups, 15 air squats. As you get closer to the 15 minute mark, then you just start going as fast as you can to rack up as many extra rounds towards the end. And I've done it with a weight vest and I've done it very smooth and felt good. It's actually been a workout that I thoroughly enjoy. I did it in my garage on Saturday after I coached without a weight vest, and it was not the same story whatsoever. One more set. Left side drops. Ah. Ah. Ooh. So in my garage doing Cindy by myself, I in 20 minutes was able to get 13 rounds and some change. And I thought that I would at least be able to emom it since I wasn't wearing a weight vest. But turns out I am wearing a weight vest, it's just you know permanently affixed to my body. Um, and my cardio and my aerobic capacity is not nearly what it used to be. And so I was humbled very quickly. And that's kind of the hard but beautiful part about these benchmark workouts is that we can look back and see either how we're progressing or as a result of not staying consistent how we are regressing in those times weights skills there's a part of me that would love to avoid ever doing a named workout again especially one that i've already done in the past because then i have to come face to face with reality that I have allowed myself to let go. I have not stayed as consistent as I should be. And therefore, I am just experiencing the consequences of that. There's a quote somewhere along the lines of your results are the perfect outcome of your current systems or your habits. So your life, the way it is right now, is a result of the things that you have either allowed, accepted, or just ignored. And now they have compounded in the same way that you know, in a year from now, if you change those decisions, your life will be a result of those decisions changed. And so every single time you come across one of these named workouts, I just want to kind of hide a little bit. I don't want to show up to the gym. I don't want to do it by myself. I don't want to put a score in because then I'm faced with reality that I have let things go. 
and it I can't use you know family and, and friends and, and business and stuff as an excuse. I just chose not to work out. I chose not to push myself beyond the point of comfort and I decided instead to stay within my comfort zone. Now, if the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago, the second best time is today. And so, yeah, I should have these last four years stayed consistent, kept hitting it, and I would have been really, you know, I could have been very excited with where I am, but I didn't. That shouldn't stop me from doing what I can now. And so I have been trying to be way more consistent with the showing up to the gym, and if I can't show up to the gym working out here in my garage, I'm trying to be way more consistent about posting content up on YouTube because that's the kind of person that I want to be, someone who's creating, someone who is working out, someone who is functionally able and fit. I just wanna go on record and say that those were some of the hardest squats I've ever done in my entire life. Oh my gosh. Now we are going for bench press. Three sets of five at 225 pounds. Oh, I'm still shaking from those squats, so. So, I don't know, I was just kind of thinking about this, this this week since, you know, I just did that like three days ago and it's kind of been on my mind, a little disappointed in my score, but again, it's the perfect outcome to the systems that I have created. My outcome and my situation has been perfectly crafted by my disciplines, by my habits, and what I consistently have or haven't done. Now, since the open, a common thing gyms do is they start building strength. So 75% of the CrossFit population after the open was done, probably higher than that. But then you have the quarterfinals, which accepted the top 25%. So assuming every single person who made it into the top 25% competed, which I know they didn't. Now you take that off and now you're left with like the top 99% of the people in the world, top 1%. And Everyone else is done with their CrossFit competition season. So typically what programs will do is they will start focusing on strength to help get you into, as we call the off season, you build that strength in your off season so that when you get back into this aerobic type working out as the open comes up again, you have more strength under your belt, which makes the workouts a little bit easier because you are a little bit stronger. I personally am not interested in getting any stronger. I feel like I am as strong as I need to be to do the things I want to do. However, I'm not choosing my own programming. I'm doing what the gym does. And the gym is focusing on four lifts. We are focusing on the squat, on the bench, on the deadlift, and on the shoulder press. So we are about eight weeks in, seven weeks in to a 12 week strength building session where we've focused again on the squat, the bench, the deadlift, and the press. And I had probably one of the hardest squat sessions of my life yesterday. Now there could have been a myriad of reasons as to why this was the hardest squat session of my life, but nonetheless, it was really hard. I did not, the day before, did not sleep that well, was going on like five hours of sleep with a really long day, um, didn't drink that much water that day, I was in the sun, so you know, I was kind of drained from the sun, like all these things. I don't know why it was such a hard session, but it was five sets of 10 reps at 65% of your back squat every three minutes. So three minutes passes, you do 10 reps, rest three minutes, do it again, rest three minutes, do it again, etc. So it ends up being five sets of 10 every three minutes at 65%, which for me, my back squat was 405, the highest it is 405. So therefore, 265 was what my 65% was. It actually was 263, but I don't have one and a half pound plates, so I just went up to 265. Immediately within the first set, I felt 
man, this is going to be difficult. I had coached it earlier that day, so I knew what some of the athletes were saying. Like, man, that was really hard. But then when I went and did it, it was hard. I was struggling. And squats normally are fine for me. And then after that, we moved on to bench. So you spend a couple minutes warming up your bench. And then it was three sets of five reps of bench at 80% which for me was 220 pounds. I just ended up doing 225 pounds and that felt fine, but I was so exhausted from the squats before. Oh yeah. Two. It was really hard to get the motivation to keep going. Like my body just wanted to stop, but I wanted to make sure that I finished those reps in for the bench press. I guess the point in all this is when you try to come back to things, when you try to change things, you're going to experience resistance. Things are going to hurt. It is going to be hard, but don't rely on motivation to get you through. Rely on habits, rely on consistency, rely on decisions that you have made beforehand that will carry you through those moments even when you don't feel motivated. I'm still got strength and I'm very grateful for my strength. I would like to switch and get a little more fit, a little, you know, be able to handle, hold on to those workouts a little bit longer, not let my heart rate just shoot through the ceiling. But I do have strength going for me, which is good. And that strength will carry on, you know, once you have those workouts where, you know, it's grace, for example, 30 clean and jerks at 135 pounds. Well, if 135 pounds is less than half of what my clean and jerk is, then that's going to be easier than if my clean and jerk was only 185, 135 for 30 would take me out. So strength is a benefit and does help within those Metcon type workouts but I just kind of relied on it a little too much. And like I said, I don't really have a desire to become much stronger for my standard CrossFit type classes. I'm plenty strong for that, but now it's being able to use that strength and turn it into consistency, turn it into aerobic capacity within workouts and that whole thing. So anyway, it may be hard to look at where you were in the past. It may be hard to look and see where other people are that you want to be in, but that doesn't mean that there's not value to it. I encourage you, even if you feel like you're moving backwards, still keep track of your momentum, still keep track of your scores, still keep track of your workouts, so that three months later you can look back and say, wow, look at where I'm improving. And even though it may not feel like it's a lot, it's still an improvement. And then, a year down the road, two years down the road, three years down the road, you'll have these data points to look back on and see how much you've grown. I hope this video was something for you, special. I hope you enjoyed these workouts. I hope you enjoyed this little chat in a different part of my garage. Um, thinking this might make a little more sense. It's in a squat rack, so people think, oh, this guy actually works out. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching it, and I'll see you next time.